This episode is sponsored by my online training portal, which is designed by me to help you become a building forensics badass. You can get free access right now at buildingperformanceworkshop.com. Enjoy. Welcome to the Building Performance Podcast from the Building Performance Workshop in Chicago. I'm Corbett Lunsford, and today we're talking about trends in high-performance building and retrofits with Dan Luchet of Tiny Home Builders in Georgia. Dan, thanks so much for talking with us today. Thank you for having me. So we just spent two days together, and I attended your Tiny Home Builders Workshop where we actually built part of a house, and we were able to kind of really spend time nerding out about the tiny house thing. Um which is interesting because I've been working in buildings and analyzing them for seven years now, but actually getting hands-on with all of the nitty-gritty details was really fun, even though they're just four small walls. I mean, it's you know literally less than 200 square feet in general. Would you say that building a tiny house is exactly like building a normal size house, just smaller? I, I would. It's, uh, you know, a lot of the same concepts are being applied. It's just, it's, so many people are doing this now because, the fact that it's so small makes it easier to manage for somebody. You know, the idea of building a 2,600 or 1,500 square foot house is just uh, really intimidating to somebody. But then going off and building 120 square foot is much more, much more reasonable for somebody. Hmm. I think what really excites me about it is all of the people who were in our class together, uh, including us, were getting an understanding of how a home really works from a hands-on perspective. And I think that most homeowners in America have no clue how their plumbing or their electrical or their just not even to mention HVAC or insulation or things like that really works. Do you see kind of like the lights come on and even if they don't go build a tiny home, do you think they're better homeowners as a result? Oh, definitely. I mean, some of the skills that you're learning when you start to build something, uh, you know, even if you're not planning on building a house are going to carry with you and and definitely can be applied to a whole bunch of different things. I know my wife, um, when I was talking about plumbing one time, she said, you know, she didn't think beyond, you know, once, once the water came out, she never thought of what was beyond how that water is being supplied. And, um, so when I talk to people and they're, you know, people have this similar uh, feeling that they don't know what's going on. They kind of feel helpless as far as if they could fix anything or if they could do something themselves. And then once they realize, Hey, this isn't really that complicated. Um, then all of a sudden it empowers them to want to take on, um, possibly fixing something or doing something themselves. Do you find on the electrical side that it actually makes them a little bit more respectful and fearful of the things that they should be taking seriously that shouldn't do it themselves? Yeah, the electrical is definitely, I mean, when we talk about that, it's not, it's also not that difficult, just like everything else. It's just that uh, with the electrical, one of the really unique things about that is that, you you know, it's probably one of the few things that could kill you when you're building a house. So um, it's, uh, you know, you have to balance saying, hey, this is doable. This is not that difficult. But if you do it wrong, you're going to burn your house down and you could die. Mm. You know, so that's a challenge. Yeah. Now, you're at this point, uh, when we're recording this, you are one of the top tiny home builders in the U.S. But you didn't come from building, right? That's right. I, I originally was a software engineer back in, uh, I started this in 2009. What was your path to getting into building? And, and kind of how, I, I feel like for me, at least, being a beginner in it, kind of having come from music myself, makes me see it with fresh eyes and maybe think about it a little bit one or two steps further than somebody who's been doing this for 30 or 40 years. Do you find the same thing for yourself? Yeah. So I, my, my dad was in construction when I was growing up. Uh, my, a lot of my family went in construction and then I just never followed through with that. I, I wanted to do something different. I went off to school and, and became a software engineer. And then, um, when I started doing building, you know, my dad was a great resource because I could fall back on him. And, and if I had any questions, he knew a lot of the answers. But um, I, I would do a lot of research. Whenever I would have to do something new, I would definitely research a lot of it. And uh, I came across these advanced framing techniques and how to frame a house in the most efficient way possible. And, um, and when I would talk to my dad about them, he was still, you know, he was still old school doing it the old way that's not as efficient where it creates cavities in your wall that, um, you know, that can't be insulated. And so uh, just coming to it with fresh eyes definitely you know, I was looking for the latest stuff and he was, he had been doing it the same way for the last 40 or 50 years. So, um, definitely, definitely new eyes can help sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you think is the biggest single misunderstanding or mistake that most people make when they're building, whether it's a tiny home or a regular sized home? You know, I think not using flashing the proper way is a, is a huge mistake and people, 
you know, they just don't think about how they're going to adequately get water or properly get water away from their structure. And when you don't do that, it's amazing to me how fast a home can deteriorate. I mean, water causes the most damage of, of houses that I've ever seen. And um, I've seen houses that in four years have just started to, um, the siding and the sheeting has just started to rot away because someone didn't adequately flash their house. And, and it's just, um, it's just sad because you put so much time, so much money, so much effort into this house. And then four years later, you know, you're having to redo some of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, there is a child in the background, and that is Dan's child. He's a happy father. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to deal with that, just like a dad would. Uh, so you don't just pick houses that are easy to flash, though. You're talking about flashing. You build houses that have to be flashed like a normal house from the top down, and also from the bottom because you've got road splash, right. and also from the front to the back because it's being pulled through the rain horizontally. Um, so what what extra steps did you have to learn as you were beginning to, to build these that led you into building kind of a super performing flashing system? Yeah, I, I mean, it's just a lot of research and just thinking about water and understanding water and, and knowing that water isn't going to act necessarily the way that you would just think. Like, you know, you would think that water is just going to follow the path of gravity, but then with surface tension and, and um, you know, the fact that water can actually travel uphill uh, in, in tight crevices where there's a vacuum being created. So you just have to think about things that, um, that you know, and, re and just research things that, uh, you know, how that's going to behave and, and um, how to handle it properly. So, mm -hmm. Well, aside from flashing, the fact that the tiny homes have to, and specifically we'll be talking later this year about our, uh, our <laughs> helping us with our own process, um, the house has to be built to withstand a hurricane and an earthquake at the same time. Um, are you finding that those extra stresses are making tiny homes? Uh, do they have to make them die faster? Or can you engineer them and build them so that they're just tougher and can take the abuse? Well, I think we, we're engineering them, and people are engineering them, not just us. To, to take the abuse. You know, your um, people ask us the difference between, you know, a, a tiny house and a conventional house and the tiny houses are very often built to higher specs than what you'd find in a, in a normal house. And, um, and a lot of that has to do with the need, but then also the fact that it's so small, people can spend a little bit more and get higher quality materials um, for such a small, small um, house. But, um, you know, when we put the, the sheeting on, we're using screws instead of nails, we're using glue, we're gluing every, every stud. And so we're just putting a lot more effort into it. And, and these are things that would get really expensive on a house and get very expensive, not only in the materials, but get expensive in having someone do the labor for them. And um, by, uh, you know, but, but since the house is so small and the need is there, that people do it. And, and I think it, it results in a much stronger house. Awesome. What are you excited about in the next couple of years, kind of down the line in the future of tiny home building? Well, I think, uh, you know, right now there's there's a big question as to where you can park a tiny house. And so that's holding a lot of people back. I think a lot of people are excited about the idea of tiny tiny living. And um, and even if they're not going to live in it full time, if they're, you know, as a vacation home or something. And, um, and I think right now, you know, that's a little bit tempered just because there is such a big question as to uh, the legality and where you're going to park them. And I think in the coming years, a lot of that's going to be worked out and resolved. And so I think you're going to see an explosion in uh, the adoption of tiny houses. Awesome. Dan, thank you very much for talking with us today. Thank you. Dan Luce is the founder of Tiny Home Builders in Georgia. You've been listening to the Building Performance Podcast. I'm Corbett Lunsford. Tune in next time.